Today I'll be going over the Faye Channel news from April 21st, 2024. We've got a couple surprises and the usual Golden Week events, but nothing crazy like last year's Senior Snare. Before we begin, I'd like to talk about the current Hall of Forms event because there is quite a controversy going on, or should I say, there will be a controversy when inevitably someone doesn't read or just didn't know. In the current Hall of Forms, Rearmed Alfred is one of the units you can build, our first rearmed units in this event. This will be the only time you will see Arcane Cheong, but I'm pretty sure only Alfred can actually get the weapon as an option as you level. Now, normally, someone who isn't in the know may think, oh, I can give Alfred a ton of super fun and powerful skills. Then, when I claim his forma, I can inherit those skills onto my other units while keeping Alfred since he's a rearmed hero. Well, from everything that's been said, it's to be understood that you cannot do this. If you claim Alfred as a forma, you cannot use him for skill inheritance. This applies to formas generally, and Alfred's rearm status does not change this. Alright, so what if I like Alfred? I just want to give him fun skills to use as a unit. Well, you can do this, but you have to understand that if you merge your normal Alfred into the forma, you now cannot use him for skill inheritance. Essentially, if you ever wanted to use Alfred for skill inheriting for later, you will brick him by merging into the forma. If you are using the regular Alfred for things like duping no quarter, for example, then I highly suggest not merging into the forma Alfred. If you don't plan to borrow Alfred skills ever again, then by all means go for it. If you got any friends planning to grab the forma Alfred though, maybe give them a heads up because some poor sap is going to get screwed. People were hoping the Fae channel would maybe update this rearm form situation, but alas, nothing. It's a very questionable decision to even put Alfred in the lineup with this. It's honestly a bit malicious to even let people potentially screw up their rearmed units. Moving on, if you aren't aware, Golden Week is a time in Japan around the end of April to start of May where a bunch of holidays line up, and as such, Japanese games love to celebrate to encourage some good old vacation spending. We'll have double SP and XP plus ore packs not shown on the Fade channel. Thanks to our data miners, we already know what to expect. You got your basic discounted orb deals and for around $25 USD, there is a pack with dual Summer Thor and Loki. I don't think that's a random pick as we'll soon discuss. For the login bonus, a lot of 7s, 77 Heroic Grails and Divine Dew, 77 times 2 for 154 Dragon Flowers of every type. As shown on the slide, Golden Week stuff will begin with the next reset. As expected, we have Hero Fest banners for all 7 Choose Your Legends winning groups, 5% focus rate, but you can get pity broken. If you have the Fey Pass, then like the release version of these banners, you can spark it up to 4 times, you can only spark each winner once. These banners will be up for a while if you want some merges or just extra copies. To accompany the banner, there will be quests to earn first summon tickets, 3 tickets for each banner for a total of 21 free summons, and the usual free banner summon for 28 chances at glory if you aren't planning to go hard on the orb spending. Good luck everyone. Before you summon on Hero Fest, you may want to see this month's mythic banner lineup. We got a sneak peek at the next mythic, and it's actually not anyone from book 8. Instead, we're heading back to technically year 1. For those not closely following the totally rich and fleshed out Fire Emblem Heroes lore, Loki has been around for quite a long time. She disguised herself as various Book 1 cast members throughout the Xenologues and Paralogues, she teased the coming of Surtur and pretended to serve him, but we then learned her true master is the mysterious Allfather. Like in usual Fire Emblem fashion, we've learned very little of what Allfather Loki and Thor's actual goals are, but maybe this is one step closer. Now, Mythic Loki will be dressed in similar white garb as Thor. The Fae channel has some hilariously blatant smoky censorship, but the artist has posted the normal, non-censored version. To be honest, it's nothing we haven't seen before. I assume it's going to be non-censored in-game, and the censorship was just for YouTube. As a Mythic hero, Loki is a flying healer, dark mythic that boosts attack. Her stats are focused on high attack and res, middling speed, and horrendous defense. Loki will be comparing res stats for her skills, so break out the Stillwater and Phantom Res. Her weapon is the Supreme Thok, 14 Might, built in Kanto 1, Wrathful Staff, and she has accelerated specials. Every turn, Loki also gains minus 1 cooldown if above 25% HP. In combat, she gains bonus attack and res based on her flat res, a free flop attack, and true damage based on in combat res. Fairly simple stuff, but combined into one weapon, Loki's gonna have a fun time. 
For her unique C skill, Divine Deceit, Loki has the tier 4 ploy effect, same 3 row 3 column range, same plus 5 res advantage for the res check, and she inflicts the same ploy and exposure statuses. Instead of any stat debuffing though, she does another ploy check. For this one, it only checks foes in common directions, but should they fail the res check, they get hit with gravity. This is from the original Thok, but we've gone from HP comparisons to res comparisons. Instead of only affecting ranged units, Loki can now gravity anyone. For the third part of the skill, after start of player or enemy phase, if foes are in the 3 row 3 column range and have 3 or more status effects active, Loki would neutralize those statuses. This will not affect statuses being applied at the same time Divine Deceit procs. This appears to be a pretty hard counter to status stacking. Most statuses are applied at start of player phase, so after they're applied, if your units have 3 or more statuses, then Loki just gets rid of them all. If you try to set up statuses mid-phase, then those will stick until enemy phase starts, since Divine Deceit procs again. We'll need testing, but it's possible someone like Citrine counters this skill. She shares her bonuses after start of turn, and Divine Deceit won't delete statuses applied during the after start of turn time frame, at least according to the wording. If this is true, Citrine may lose her buffs, but maybe she will pass them to allies and they'll keep it for the player phase? Even if this works, this doesn't really help enemy phase tanking. In Dark Season, Loki can knock off statuses while Embla denies in combat support. You can avoid both of their ranges in other modes, but in Aether Raids, it's kind of possible they cover half the map each. Now, to wrap up this skill, if the foe has any kind of penalty active, Loki will get plus half attack and res in combat. For other skills, she adds attack and res catch 4, return plus, and glitter of light. She has a new inheritable healer B skill called Dis uh, Dazzling Discord. At start of turn, inflict Discord on the closest foes within 5 spaces, and also spread it to other foes within 2 spaces, if they have less res than the user. In combat, inflict minus 4 attack and res, and prevent counter attacks. Dazzling Discord is neat, but you need a high res healer like Loki, and ideally they need a Wrathful Staff, Staff. From my quick searching, this would be someone like Safi and Young Lucius for more unique modern weapons. Obviously, feel free to run the Inheritable Staffs if you think you can win that res check. We can talk about Mythic Loki more when her banner is released, but to cap it off, you may have noticed she has a bunch of effects we've seen before. Gravity from the original Thok, but then constant minus one cooldown and the status neutralization from Dual Summer Thor and Loki. Clearly, the dual Thor orb pack is not a coincidence. Status neutralization is incredibly rare. Even if it only works if the foe is in range and has three or more status effects, this still discourages super buffed up units. Using status effects is one way to get around Emla's feud effect, but if Loki's on her team, then now you got issues with status buffing and in combat support. Mythic Loki's banner will begin at the end of the month in about a week. We basically got all the info about her from this Fate channel though. Loki's return involves a couple new features. First off, merged ordeals. If you have a mythic Loki with at least a plus one merge, you can unlock a brand new heroic ordeals challenge. Complete this harder map to earn a whopping 600 dragon flowers compared to the standard 40. Loki is not going to be the only unit this applies to. Starting from update 8.4, any newly released legendary, mythic, and emblem heroes will get a merged ordeals. The dragon flowers will correspond to the unit's movement type as usual. My thoughts on this matter is that it's obviously another incentive to go for plus one merges. It's a pretty sizable reward, but it should be clear that whales benefit the most from the system. Let's say you want a copy to keep and a copy to fodder. Well, now you want a third copy to merge. To be clear, you don't have to spend any money to use this feature, but it's just another temptation to pull more that doesn't really apply to people who can plus 10 multiple five star units at a whim. Pay to win and gotcha are synonymous. Something that is a bit stingy is that the system only applies to newly released units. Back when they gave us the Dragonflyer system, even if very old units only gave a pathetic two Dragonflyers from completing their ordeal, at least you got something for summoning and having the older units. If you got a merged up Emblem Ike, you get nothing. It feels like they should have rewarded older merged up legendaries or mythics even at a reduced rate like say 100 or 200 Dragonflyers, heck just another 40 extra would still be nice. Not only do you give players something back for going for these limited time units, but wouldn't this entice people to get plus one merges for those older legends and mythics? The entire point of Dragon Flowers is to help older units catch up in stats. It doesn't really help when you need to keep spending more and more over time, especially as you want to use more and more units. To conclude, moisture deals is fine, but would have been nice to uh not lock it to only new units from here on out. Now, the next treat Loki is bringing us is something everyone can participate in. Rooker's Sieges is coming back. 
I don't know if they changed anything, but I would guess probably not. At the very least, for this Golden Week Rooker Sieges, you can earn up to 1,000 of each Dragonflower type. I'm pretty sure this is a one-off special, but if they did actually change Rooker Sieges, then maybe not. From the notification, it would appear the normal reward structure is being replaced by these larger Dragonflower rewards. I don't think this changes the normal amount of orbs we get from monthly events, but would it really hurt to give us the Dragonflowers and keep the original rewards from the game mode? Personally, I would love if they actually did tweak our old standing game modes, but clearly the devs aren't really into that. For the last part of the video, we got a preview of update 8.5 features. One of our refines and remixes will be for Legendary Sigurd. Holy Knight R got a small damage bump, and along with plus one movement, Sigurd now gets a status for 40% DR on initiations for one hit. Should the special trigger, Sigurd adds defense buffs and the same 40% DR status to his list of bonuses he gives to allies. While Sigurd's whole thing is going on in a blaze of glory, if he doesn't die, then generally that is preferred. For his new frame remix skill, Sigurd will get sealed defense 4, extra damage, never hurts. For his refine, I have to imagine the Kanto emblem is going to get Kanto at least. Also from Engage, if it does happen, I would expect him to save it for the actual emblem Sigurd, but I would still love to see Override in Fey. What would that even look like? Now our other remix goes to Legendary Male Violet, Sublime Heaven 2 also got a small damage bump and keeps its DR piercing effect. Now it comes with a built-in times pulse. Since Violet no longer needs the C scale, he's going to get Attack and Speed Oath 4 for free. Like his female counterpart, he gains Field Buffs and Warping. I'm interested to see Violet's Refine because, as mentioned many times, Scowl hard counters his instant special game plan. Considering the dual Winter Professors got Scowl themselves, I wouldn't be surprised if this version flipped it around to instead gain instant cooldown. It's redundant with a pre-charged special, but currently that's the only counter to Scowl or Hus Spectrum. I mean, Technically, you could just get a ton of res, but I don't know about that. Something else to watch out for is Bonnet's now fall-up support and his weapon. I wonder if they're going to expand upon that. Last news for today is that the weekly revival banners are going to start coming in sets of 3 per week rather than just 2. These banners include all the retired 5-star units, aka those 4-star summons that become 5-stars as they're revealed. If you want to merge up these older units, you're going to want to look at the weekly revival schedule in the notification board. These are your best chances to get these units, and you can plan out your orb savings in advance. That'll be it for this month's Fae channel. Wasn't expecting much, but I guess Loki coming back was a surprise. Will we actually advance the Allfather plot this year? Who knows? If anything, from the Fae channel wasn't to your liking, there is a feedback form in the miscellaneous menus, just saying. Golden Wing events will begin with the next daily reset, so go get all the rewards and good luck on the Hero Fest banners if you're summoning. I don't have any plans for more copies, so hopefully I can get at least one Lapis Merge out of these free summons. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.